financial freedom mindset. What's up, my people? Today I'm talking about paying off debt for 2018. I know a lot of people always want to have a New Year's resolution, and I don't 100% agree with New Year's resolution because I feel like you don't you waiting for the calendar to reset to do something you should be doing right now today. But everybody different. This is just my opinion. I don't do it. Whatever it is, I want to do it right now. But if you're one of those person who want to start the new year's fresh, I get it. I'm just here to spark something in your mind. If you didn't think about it, so to suggest to you for 2018 to try to focus and pay off debt that you accumulated from 2017 or any time before. So let's say you have a um, credit card debt for 2018 tackle it this is just a suggestion from me to you because when you don't have the credit card debt is it's a lot when you don't have debt period it's a lot of freedom that you don't have to worry about so i'm suggesting to people and take it serious sit down with your spouse your husband your wife all your family members who are really involved with your finances in your house again Sometimes you're going to have to walk alone. I'm not telling you to walk alone, but sometimes you got to do it. It can't be one person taking it serious and the other person playing around. But sit down with your wife and you, or your husband and have this conversation, your spouse, because it's very important. So my suggestion to people for 2018 is to try your hardest and to pay off debt. In my head, for debt, just... Using that as an example, you don't have to do it. It's something that I apply and it worked for me. It's something that you could apply. I know it will work for you, but it takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice. I would say pay your bills, work and pay your bills. But any extra income you get and make sure there is extra income. If you got to work longer, do Uber, Lyft, get another part time job, sell something, whatever it is, sell it. Close your eyes and throw the money on the debt. Throw the money on the credit cards. Throw the money on that car loan. Throw the, mark, the money on that mortgage. Whatever you owe, hospital bills, whatever that you plan on paying, pay it off. So in my head, let's say 2018, if I was in bad financial state, I would sit down with the family and be like, hey, this is what we're going to do for 2018. Ain't no holidays. This is my mind. Just a suggestion to you. No anniversary. We're not spending money on anniversaries. We could do something nice together in the home. Something nice, you know, little flowers, whatever. But as in spending money, 300 400 200 100 dollars on gifts and stuff, not this year. I don't care what anybody tell me outside of this family. It's only me, wife, my kids. I don't care about nobody else's opinion. Because at the end of the day, when you in financial need, nobody else have the money to help you. It's only you and your family. And I don't want to be the burden to nobody. And I don't want to ask them for nothing. So I would say, let's just say one year. This one year could get you of sacrifice. Could get you out of debt. Even if you have a car payment. And let's say you owe three years on your car payment. You can pay that car off in one year. Get your tax return. Close your eyes. And pay the money to the principal. One year, you can do it. You don't have to sit there and pay them five or three years. You don't have to. It's like paying a minimum balance for a credit card. That's how the mortgage works. It's a 30-year term if you pay the monthly mortgage, whatever your monthly mortgage is. But you can take extra money and pay it on the principal for your mortgage and also for your car loan. So I'm telling people, do that. Make that your purpose for 2018. If you owe three years on your car loan, even two, say, you know what? This year, 2018, I'm knocking it out. No excuse. If you have the debt, sit down with your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, or if this is just you by yourself, 2018, hey, man, I'm focusing. I'm working extra time and I'm paying this car off. I'm working extra time and I'm uh, pay more on the mortgage. I'm working this extra time to put more in my savings. Whatever it is, but this gives you a purpose to wake up in the morning. Not saying like a purpose like that, but it inspires you to wake up and say, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to tackle it. There's never been a time that I paid extra money on anything and I regretted it. 
after I paid it. But it's always been times that I didn't do that and I bought something and I regretted it. So in the, even that time when I had, when I told you I was in like $30,000 of credit card debt, and let's say I was probably, I don't know, 20000 And when I did get money, instead of paying more money on my, to bring the debt down on my credit card, I bought rims. So yeah, it looked nice and people come around like, oh, your car looked nice and they ask me about it. And I'm like, man, that was a bad investment. I shouldn't have spent that money on that. I should have paid off my credit card because these people will forever be there. And you need credit to survive. Everybody knows here you need credit. Unless you got cash, cash money like that, you need credit. So the more debt you have, the less your credit is. And, the more, and if you don't pay them, when it's time to really handle business, your interest rate is way up. And a lot of us learned the hard way. A lot of us got we was young and we got credit because people didn't talk to us and let us know how important credit was. Isn't it funny in life? You need credit, but they don't talk to you about it in school. Teach you about everything else. Some stuff that I never used to this day that they taught me in school. But they don't teach you about life, real life. They don't teach you about credit and debt. Maybe because some of these people who control a lot of stuff want you have been debt because it benefit them off of making money off of us. So now that you got bad credit, they charge you 16, 16%, 18% on interest rates when you financing the car. They charge you more money when you're getting a loan from the bank for your mortgage. Instead of you paying 2%, some people paying 9%. And it sounds like a little, but when you break the numbers down, it's a, it's a way big difference. But anyway, to go back to say, get the pay your bills for 2018. Your kids don't, for your financial goals, if you want to buy them something small, I don't even recommend buying it small because a lot of people buy small, but then they buy a lot of small stuff and they add up to the same price as big stuff. My suggestion is you don't have to do it. The kids is not going to die. They're not going to be miserable. Trust me, they will get over it. I'm saying clothes, food, shelter. They don't need the best clothes right now. When I say best clothes, I mean they don't need the best name brand clothes right now. You can buy food from the grocery store. Go home and cook. You get more for your money. You don't have to eat out. One year, if you sacrifice one year, whatever your financial state is going to be better. Even if you ain't owing no debt, let's just say you just want to save $5,000, $10,000 that year. You can do it. If you listen to what I'm saying, you can do it. You don't have to be broke for 2019. You can look back at 2018 and say, man, I'm glad I sacrificed. I did this. I did that. This and that. You can do it. So sit down with the spouse and say, hey, let's try it. Let's take it serious. Forget the Christmas. Forget Black Friday. Man, those regular days. Don't let nobody from outside of your family try to convince you that you're doing something wrong. The same people that's convincing you that you're doing something wrong, trust me, they're not in that financial space where they should even be telling you that what you're doing is wrong. They don't know. Now that we know. We can do better and you can pass the information to them. Trust me, I know it's hard, but to get where you want to go, you're going to have to sacrifice. There is there's no such thing as luck when it comes to goals and success. Successful people, when it comes to finance, finances, they are not lucky. They're willing to do what other people won't do. So later on, they're going to be able to do what other people can't do. Meaning, if you're sacrificing now... The people that's partying now, later on, is going to be harder for them. But if you're sacrificing now, later on, it will be easier for you. This is the future. It's a guaranteed future. People that work hard always going to benefit some way or another. But you can't work hard and spend all your money to get the financial freedom. That's a, a lot of mistakes that a lot of people make. So, again, if you owe three years, four years on your car, try your best next year to tackle that debt if you got credit card payments try your best to tackle that debt if you paying a mortgage send extra money to the principal tackle that debt you don't have to continue to pay these people the more the longer you pay them the more you at risk that something 
a financial emergency could happen to your family and these same people could come back and take your house. They could come back and take your car. The longer you wait, if you want to sit there and keep sending them the minimum balance, God forbid if something happened when you got six months left on those payments on that car, you know what they're going to do? Thank you for the payments that you did. We're going to send this repo company to come get that car. Everything you put in that car, it don't matter if you change the engine, the transmission, tires, they taking that car back and they're going to resell it. So the number one rule and the same thing for houses. We, you see when the economy went down back in, I think, 2008, how much people we know that live in houses for 20 years, but because they didn't save or they didn't focus and try to pay their house off, the same bank they've been, they thought that who was their friends and they're walking around talking about this is my house. If you don't own that, if you're doing payments, you don't own that house. Those same people came after 20 years and kicked them out of that house and sold it for way cheaper than what they could have sold it to the people or work something out with the people that have been living there for 20 years. I understand how it go. You understand how it go. These people are not our friends. It's business. I'm not blaming them. I'm always put the blame on myself because I have to know better. I don't trust them. I should not trust them. They don't trust me. They should not trust me. I'm not their friend. Just because you got an agreement to pay them for 30 years, don't sit there and pay them 30 years. If you can, double up on the payments if you got extra money and pay them 15, 20 years. The, the faster you pay them off, the faster you own it. <clears throat> and for me, and for all of us need to be, the number one rule is ownership. Ownership, nobody can take it from you. As long as you're doing payment, they can come and take it. It don't matter if you owe them three months and you've been paying them on time for five years for that car. They will come and take that car or have a judgment against you or whatever they do. It don't matter if you've been paying on that house for 25 years and you got five years left and you ain't paying because something happened to you. They will come and take that house. For me, I don't even like using the word ownership when it comes to house because they be like, oh, you're the owner. I am not the owner. I am the buyer that have an agreement with the owner that as long as I pay this, uh, they will um, allow me to continue to pay them until I'm finished paying them. Then I will be the owner. And then once I have that deed in my hand for the property and once you have that title in their hand for the car, now you're the owner. Nobody can take it from you. You can pass it down. But if, as long as you having payments, you can't pass this down because you're not the owner. So faster you pay them off, the better it is for you. So just to spark something in your mind, just in case you didn't think about it. Because, uh, you know, some people don't think about this stuff and, or people don't even know to say, I didn't know you could uh, pay these people off. The bank, when before I bought the, um, the house and before I started buying houses, they used to have a thing called prepayment penalty. They used to penalize you for trying to pay them off before your 30 years was up. But because the economy went so down, banks don't even do that no more. But this is to show you how they try to keep you in debt and say, oh, you're going to try to pay us off earlier or you're going to pay an extra fee for trying to pay us off earlier. You see how they are? But now they're just happy to get the money, I guess, after experience with the economy. They're just like, man, if you're paying us and you want to pay us off early, we just want to get our money. Please, please pay us off. We're not charging you uh, prepayment penalties anymore. But um, just to say that ownership, we could pass it down as long as we own it. Focus, try your best, tackle it. One year ain't going to hurt you. You and your wife, your spouse, your husband, y'all, look how much money y'all made this year. And, and look back and say, what? Think about your money and, and see if where the money went. <clears throat> I know you're going to be like, where we made this much money? Where, where did our money go? It went into spending on a lot of stuff that you don't even remember that you bought or probably broke or put it up somewhere and you don't even touch it and, and use it no more. But everybody that I know, or I can speak personally for myself, I never paid extra on a debt and tackled the debt and regretted it. That year that I got out of debt and I looked back and said, man, I thank God I paid them people. I never, it's, it's an accomplishment. And now that you know that you can pay a car off, even though the, the, um, the thing has three years on it and you paid it off in one year, in your mind, you, it's a certain pride that you have. It's inspiration. You're like, you know what? What's next? What else can I pay off on time? I, the average person telling you to pay off for five years to build your credit. Nah, you do that. I'm not doing that. My, my, you don't know my credit. My credit already straight. So I'm going to pay them off in a year. The average person telling you to pay 30 years on your mortgage and then spend and enjoy after that. But 
the, the average person own their house. Did they get kicked out of the house before? That same mentality will get you kicked out and waste a lot of money. So next year, just try to focus. And once you get that pride in yourself, you like, what's next? That's how that's that's how it worked with me. I'm like, oh, I can do that. I did it. So what's next? Oh, people taking 30 years to pay off a house. I seen somebody pay their house off in 15 years, and it was a 30 year mortgage. Now they own their house, straight up own their house. And after they own their house, they treated themselves to something real nice, and they deserve it. So I'm saying, if you focus on 2018, act like no holidays exist. Just work hard, sacrifice. <coughs> And don't just do it at the beginning of the year and start getting comfortable when Black Friday roll around and Christmas and now you're spending. Sacrifice that whole year. And I guarantee you, when 2019 come, you won't say, man, I am I shouldn't have sacrificed and paid um, all my debt off in 2018. Da, 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 da. Your credit going to skyrocket. And now all you're going to have more opportunities than you ever had because you now you have more money. You don't owe nobody. So anyway, just to spark something in your mind, pay them people off, send extra money on the principal on your mortgage, and um, we could do it. All we got to do is change our mindset. They do it. We can do it. They're not better than us. We're not better than them. I believe in you. You got to believe in yourself. Don't make me believe in you more than you believe in yourself. If you agree with what I'm saying, disagree with what I'm saying, leave a comment, uh, leave likes. And subscribe to the channel. I keep forgetting this head. Later, my people.